welcome to this week's video. Before we go any further, I want to give a special shout out to last month's Patreon Art Challenge winners. Shwing! They did a 20 minute painting challenge and did a fantastic job. I did it myself and it was freaking hard, so. Today we are talking about the stages of being an artist. I'd like to give a shout out to this lovely lady. I got the video idea from her. If you want to check out her video, I will leave the link in my description. Now, I really can only speak from personal experience, so I guess this is a little bit of a self-portrait of the stages of being an artist, but if you guys have any that I missed or that you can relate to throughout this video, make sure you let me know in the comments. I would like to hear if you have anything to add. Let's go ahead and make some art, do some time lapse, and talk about the stages of being an artist. Like I said, this is a little bit of a self-portrait of the stages of an artist, so for me, stage one begins as a wee little tot. We'll call this phase the baby baller phase. This is the phase in which I remember having ultimate confidence about my art. I was infallible. In fact, if my mom tried to step in and give me some critique, maybe fancy up a few parts of my art, she'd ruin it. Sending me into a full meltdown where eventually I banished her from helping me with my art. If you can't tell by now, I was a bold, obstinate kind of kid. Pretty much what I made was the shiz, and I needed no adult interference. Sure, give me some lessons, give me challenges, set me up with my supplies, but then watch out, because I'm a boss. I remember this early stage, my nephew, who's the same age as me, my nephew and I both drew teddy bears with crayons, and then I went to my mom to ask whose was better. I'll always remember, she said. Well, Robin, yours is more realistic, and Taylor, yours is bigger. Now, obviously, I knew being the most realistic meant that I had the winning characteristic, but you know what? To him, being bigger made his the winner. And you know why? It's because we were both baby ballers. Totally infallible. Just fantastic. Okay, let's move to stage two, which for me was elementary school. And I'm going to call this the kid competitor stage. My reason for this was that by this time, I'm around other kids more. I'm going to art class, I can scope out what other people are doing. I'm starting to become more aware of my ranking and compare myself to others. I walk the school halls looking at our art shows and everyone's projects displayed and I'm keeping a running tally, making sure I like where I stand with the other kid competitors. As time goes on, my status gets slightly more fragile. I mean, we're moving away from the full child ego that's completely self-centric, that baby baller phase, but I still felt pretty okay. By sixth grade though, I was starting to care about boys and being cool, trying to be less dweebish, and all that self-conscious flurry that comes with entering the teen years was setting in. I'd say around this time is where I started losing my mojo. A little bit. I mean, I still liked my art, but I definitely got a pretty hefty slice of humble pie once teenagehood set in. So let's enter stage three, the doodle bopper stage. For those of you who have younger parents than me, this is a play off the term teeny bopper. I don't know, did anyone else's parents still say that? Cause I'm pretty sure my dad used to call me that when I was in that young teen phase. Anyway, being a doodle bopper went down like this for me. We're now in junior high school, the land of the scared shizless. I honestly can't remember what I was doing very well with art during this time, but that in itself says something to me, that I was just sort of doodle bopping around. I was ultra concerned now with my self-image, how socially awkward I felt constantly, and with finding my place in the social hierarchy. Not that I was obsessively climbing the social ladder, mind you. I just hung out with a bunch of nice misfits and theater kids. The awesomest. I do remember a few projects from this time though, and I would characterize my work as very doodly and illustrative. I wanted it to be cool, inked, sketchy. I was probably employing some of those new mark making techniques I was learning in art class. You know, the cross hatching and the like. Everything was dominantly drawing based unless I specifically had a mixed media or painting assignment. For me, I did assignments and put a lot into them, but outside of that I didn't do much personal work unless I was doodling. In my notes, on my tests, on my shoes, my backpack, my pants, people's arms, wherever. Not anything I took seriously though, just doodling. Doodling took me right up to high school where I entered stage four. 
the assignment-y phase. To that point, I had taken art class seriously enough, but now my art teachers were getting serious about prepping us for college. Now was the time to create portfolios we could show to colleges, and that meant we needed to demonstrate skills. Skills the colleges could measure and use to determine our worth in their program. Here's where I went from a doodle bug to a focused, traditional art student. My AP art teacher saw my potential and pushed me to really hone in on my academic skills. Sight drawing, still lives, painting from life. I got super into it, and I loved the validation of being the best at realism. I guess this traces back to my teddy bear story maybe, but in my mind, being good meant being able to see something and copy it to a T. The problem? I had no original thoughts during this period. Everything I made looked like an assignment. It wasn't personalized. It was a generic idea that the students had been asked to do. A pencil drawing of a bicycle, of hands, of feet, what have you. But it was a valuable stage for sure. It gave me the building blocks I needed to later dive into a personal concept with a solid background knowledge of the basics. So get me here. I do not mean to knock it. Also, I get this stage is different for different people. There were students in my class who were very creative. I just wasn't one of them. So sorry if this is limited to my experience, but like I said, feel free to jump in with your own stages in the comment section. Ra-cha-cha. Stage five, the flailing stage. Alternatively, the identity crisis stage. This stage began for me in college. I call it the flailing stage because it is when I first became concerned with finding my style and I had no idea what I wanted to make. I just had left high school and I was still full force in my assignment -y phase. During this time, I was taking all the intro level courses, getting oriented, feeling out different mediums. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how I got out of this stage, check out my how to find your art style video. Whoop self-promotion linked in the description i will say briefly though that this phase consisted of a lot of trial and error and some anxious stressing over not knowing what i wanted to make followed by starting to flow into my groove and orient into artwork that i loved and gave me consistent goals and aesthetics to work towards man i feel like my voice is just getting more and more gravelly throughout this still sick guys sorry <laughs> stage six came with graduation the holy crap phase. Okay, this phase actually started before graduation for me, and it's actually what led me to get art ed certified, but I'll characterize this stage as the one where you begin seeing your future on the horizon, the end of your studenthood, and you begin to panic over your educational choices, questioning whether this is actually a viable career option, how are you going to pay the bills, if you can make it work as an artist. I'll be real, I was probably in this phase for six years. May not be that long for you, might be longer, who knows? It existed as I approached graduation. While I worked on various jobs and did artwork on the side, after I quit my first teaching job and went full time with painting and YouTubing, and then, even then, questioning, can I be self-disciplined enough for self-employment? Do I enjoy all the risk taking of this? Will my countless hours ever pay off? Do I even enjoy working alone, at home, by myself? Can anyone hear me? See me? Am I shouting into the void? Hello? It really is ending only now-ish. Now that I'm finding some financial stability in the career path and I do feel like I'm not just painting into the void. <laughs> because stage six is still at arm's length for me, whatever stage I'm in now is still too close to offer an objective vantage point. Are any of you past stage six? What do you think comes next? Right now, it kind of feels like stage seven is the experimental phase for me. Maybe it's a period where things start coming together and getting comfortable, so our brains feel this need to create a disturbance again, creating some combination of utter joy and fulfillment and a complete existential crisis. Maybe that's just my personal life and it has nothing to do with art. Seems like many artists and humans go through some sort of existential crisis in their life though, you know? Feel out a new style shift, enter a new period with their art. Picasso, anyone? Well, I guess I don't have much perspective on this one yet. So, guess we'll just have to wait and see. you guys enjoyed that video if you did make sure you like it and subscribe for new videos coming out every friday and i will see you next week